Joe Biden makes a surprise trip to Ukraine. The Chinese spy balloon was actually spying when it traveled across America. Plus, Democrat John Fetterman is back in the hospital, this time for weeks. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. Okay, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with Joe Biden in Ukraine. And you know how presidents make surprise trips to visit the troops on Christmas or Thanksgiving? Well, Biden made a surprise trip to a place that has no U.S. troops. Yep, Biden paid a surprise visit to Ukraine, which now has American tanks and a whole lot of American money. Maybe that's what he was visiting. And guess what? Biden has now pledged even more. And just today, that announcement includes artillery ammunition for HIMARS and howitzers, more javelins, anti-armor systems, air surveillance radars to help protect Ukrainian people from aerial bombardments. The price tag for this new support is another half a billion dollars. That brings us up around 30 billion that we've paid out to Ukraine, and we have no accounting for how the money was spent. Meanwhile, the White House is spinning this surprise trip as some kind of bold move by Joe Biden. Aides to President Biden are portraying this as the move of a bold leader, a gutsy move, one that uh, was conducted under extreme difficulty, they said. Uh, the small pool of reporters that was permitted to travel with the president were made, uh, each of them, to uh, surrender their phones uh, for the trip. Uh, as we've noted, a lot of the footage uh, and the readouts of the various meetings were delayed in their release. I'm sorry, but I just don't get it. There's nothing bold here. Biden was scheduled to go to Poland this week, so he stopped in Ukraine first. There's no leadership being displayed here. Instead, we see a weak leader who is only emboldening America's enemies. The president of the European Union right now saying China has signed an agreement with Russia to support Vladimir Putin in Ukraine. So there, again, it may be a teaming up of sorts between China and Russia at this time. Even uh, Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State, speaking to CBS News on an interview saying that tr China strongly considering giving military aid to Russia. As this is going on, we have Senators Lindsey Graham and Mitch McConnell wearing Ukraine ties and going all in on endless payments to Ukraine. But the Biden administration has yet to lay out a firm policy, strategy, or goals. This is not going to fly much longer and it shouldn't. All right, next let's talk about the Chinese spy balloon. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, next let's talk about the Chinese spy balloon and a stunning revelation from Antony Blinken and Joe Biden's State Department. It turns out that the alleged spy balloon was actually a spy balloon. And it was actually spying. We knew all this from the first visual sightings of the balloon, but the Biden administration stonewalled while at the same time claimed that they were being transparent. They let this balloon fly across the entire United States and did nothing about it. Here's Secretary of State Antony Blinken on what the spy balloon was doing as it crossed the country. Well, Chuck, what I can tell you is this. Uh, what, is, what is clear is that <clears throat> once the balloon was over the United States and flying basically west to east, it attempted to surveil very sensitive military sites. Um, in some cases, it loitered uh, or returned to them as it progressed east. So there is no doubt in our minds at all that, A, this was a surveillance balloon, and B, it was attempting to engage in active surveillance. The balloon would actually loiter. Did you catch that? It would stop, hang out, and go back to certain spots then move on to the next sensitive military target. NBC's Chuck Todd asked Blinken if the U.S. overreacted when it shot down the other three objects, you know, the $10 hobby balloon and a couple other aircraft that we will likely never recover. And he pivoted right back to the spy balloon because I guess Biden's team is really proud of that one. Uh, no, Chuck, I think and the president spoke to this himself uh, just, uh, just the other day. Uh, with regard to uh, the surveillance balloon from China itself. Uh, as you know, uh, we spotted it. We took action to protect sensitive information on the ground that it was attempting to surveil. 
We got information from the balloon itself as it traversed the United States. And when it was safe to do so, in terms of not posing a danger to, to people on the ground, uh, we shot it down. So why all of a sudden is the Biden administration shooting down hobby balloons and other objects? Apparently, it's a radar recalibration issue. What happened after that uh, was we recalibrated uh, our radars because this balloon program, based on information we have now, has been going on for some time. Um, in years past, we weren't necessarily looking uh, right. at the, the space in which this was happening. We recalibrated the radars, and as a result, we saw more things that we weren't seeing in, um, in the past. Okay, there is so much wrong with those comments from Blinken. First of all, he said that they've known about these balloons for some time, but they weren't looking for them. Why not? And then he said that after this recalibration, the radars picked up more stuff. So you recalibrate the radar, but you don't recalibrate the brain? Surely Biden's team and the intelligence community can determine whether a $400,000 missile should be used to shoot down a kid's $10 hobby balloon. But the real kicker in all of this is from the report from CBS News that U.S. intelligence saw the spy balloon lift off near China's south coast and tracked it for nearly a week before it entered U.S. airspace. Biden knew about this from the moment of liftoff. He could have shot it down over Alaska, but instead it loitered over sensitive military targets. Great job. All right, next let's talk about Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman and his ongoing saga with health issues. And this is just sad because Fetterman, along with Joe Biden, show a win at all cost mentality that completely disregards whether a person is fit for office or can actually do the job. Last summer, Fetterman had a near fatal stroke. And with that recovery, say for a person who is not in the public arena or high stress environment, there are a number of challenges. At United Hebrew of New Rochelle, residents recovering from stroke are watched carefully for signs of depression as they cope with impacts on their ability to move and communicate. For a lot of people, that can be uh, a very humbling experience, and it can also lead to issues, issues with self-esteem and therefore an, an increase in depressive symptoms. So let's get this straight. Following a massive stroke, not only are there possible physical limitations, movement, sensory processing, comprehension issues, but because of those problems, there's also the issue of depression. It's known. It happens. And this is the person the Democrats kept pushing and pushing and pushing. On the campaign trail, Fetterman would give statements like this one on Trump tax cuts that are just incoherent. No, I, I just do. I, I think the, uh, that simply is also, Leah, this talk about the trillions in, in massive tax uh, or tax uh, cuts to the corporate uh, tax uh, structure is well true. You know, trillions of dollars that have added to the deficit and, and now th they still want to support those as well true. Despite clear limitations to do the job as senator, the Democrats stuck with Fetterman and he won. Then, as could have been predicted, the pressure of the actual job has taken its toll. A few weeks ago, Fetterman was hospitalized for several days. He was released but now he's back in and being treated for clinical depression. We know that Senator Fetterman pushed himself so hard in those weeks after the stroke when in an ideal world he would have been recovering. It is Dr. Megan Ranney says Fetterman's bout with post-stroke depression is not surprising. His office says while Fetterman experienced depression occasionally in past years, it recently became severe. A doctor recommended inpatient hospitalization for treatment. Interesting. Fetterman has had cases of depression before. It was known. Then he has a massive stroke, and none of the Democrats thought it might not be a good idea to continue. Now doctors say Fetterman will be spending weeks at the hospital in therapy while his new course of medication is determined. And this is the guy who Pennsylvanians picked. Incredible. All right, next, the defund the police movement is still going strong in Democrat-run cities across the country. And this weekend's meltdown in Austin, Texas, was a perfect example. Not only did you have multiple locations across the city engaged in illegal and dangerous car events, but the police were completely unable to get on top of the situation. Cars doing donuts. People throwing fireworks at a cop car. Girls hanging out the windows. And these people on fire. Take, take it off, take it off, take it off. 
A little after nine last night, people were blocking intersections, one at Lamar Boulevard and Barton Springs Road, another at Mueller Boulevard and East 51st Street, and another on Howard Lane in North Austin. Oh my gosh, friends, this wasn't at some racetrack. This was occurring at regular intersections in Austin. And yes, those people on fire are probably idiots, but these intersections are going to have regular people too, driving cars or walking, just trying to live their lives. Where's the law in order? Well, it's defunded, and the results show. The event went on until around 1.30 in the morning. Austin PD says an officer was hurt and several vehicles were damaged. Travis County Sheriff's Office spokesperson says two of their vehicles had their windows busted out, rocks thrown at them, and they had to be towed. We didn't have no intention of hurting nobody. You know, that's, uh, that's our fault. We're sorry to that police officer that got hurt. I mean, he should have just stayed in his own lane. It sure does look like the crowd was in control. And now you have the organizers saying the police should just stay in their lane. What lane is that? In these cities that defund the police, all you are going to get is more chaos. And people, not those guys on fire, but regular people will get hurt. All right, and next we have Megan and Harry, the royal couple who are making a living in the spotlight by saying they just want to be normal people and not be in the spotlight. Of course, they go on TV and do interviews and documentaries, all to show that they just want to be left alone. Right. Well, the program South Park has been having a field day making fun of Meghan and Harry, and they don't really appreciate it. Here's an example. But if we just try to present and control an image of us for people to see them, we're just performers instead of human beings. He's right. Trying to make ourselves into a brand just turned us into products. We don't need to be a brand, do we? If it's truly what we want, then we really can get away from it all. No more magazines and Netflix shows. We really can live a normal life. Yes, I could have saved this for Relax Brain Friday, but it was too good to pass up. And the hypocrisy of these two and their overall lameness is just over the top. Here's more. For our first guest, the prince and his wife. <laughs> We, we want, want privacy. privacy! We want privacy! Hey, thanks for having us on the show! It's so awesome to be here, it's great! What can you even say? According to the Post Millennial, Meghan Markle is so upset with the portrayal that she is having the couple's attorneys look into the matter. Apparently, this private couple who wants tons of media adoration without any public ridicule is willing to sue anyone who doesn't just absolutely love them. Keep up the good work, South Park. Friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, today's show's one sheet is available to Patreon supporters using the link in the description. The one sheet gives you the links to all the videos and stories used on today's show, so you can dive even deeper into each issue. And with that, our next show will be Wednesday evening at the usual time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.